Hello, my name is Frazier Yasulu. You probably know me. I'm your KM1510 instructor. So I wanted to try something uh, new this week uh, by providing this uh, PowerPoint video. And then you let me know if it's helpful or not. Right, chemical equations. Uh, what are we trying to do in this lab? Well, we are going to perform reactions and uh, we know what the reagents are. And then our goal is to figure out the products and then write the balanced chemical equation. Hmm. So let's start with an example here. Hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, left on its own, like you can buy hydrogen peroxide 3% from any grocery store, nothing happens. Sprinkle in some manganese dioxide, and then voila, a reaction occurs. You see gasping form, some bubbling and whatever it is. We can test the gas and verify its oxygen. So we would write then, would then write oxygen on this side as a product, and then try and figure out what the other products are. H2O2 then, well, hmm, what could the other product be? Maybe we'd guess it's hydrogen. And then, of course, well, no, it can't be hydrogen because hydrogen and oxygen react explosively. So in this case, you think about the simplest other product you can think about. And in this case, H2O is uh, what you might guess the other product to be. And then you write the balance reaction as indicated. Since the solution warms up, you write energy on the other side. And then we can easily verify that nothing happens to the manganese dioxide, so it must be a catalyst, and for that reason we we'll write it above the arrow. And then we indicate the, the physical states, aqueous, liquid, and gas in this case. How do you know a chemical reaction has occurred? Well, there might be a color change, formation of a solid, a precipitate gas formation, or just a temperature change. Moving along. Classification of reactions, these are just groupings, and so many of these are self-descriptive combination, decomposition, single displacement, and double displacement. We'll be reviewing these uh, particular cases, the later two uh, down the road here. Other classifications, acid-base reaction, you profiled that, I'm sure, in class. An acid is an H plus donor or a species that increases the uh, uh, hydronium or H plus concentration. A base increases the hydroxide concentration or is an H plus acceptor. So in a classic way, uh, acid plus base equals water plus a salt. Redox. Redox. How about redox? Well, the true and complete definition has to do with oxidation states. You guys will see that real soon in class. But for now, we're just looking at uh, looking for two things. Have electrons been transferred, gained or lost? Then it's a redox. Um, or if an element is uh, produced or used up, that's a redox. In this case, one can see copper forms copper 2 plus on the other side and so uh, copper is lost electrons or else you can say um, the elements change status here it's a solid it's copper 2 plus on the other side so these are redox reactions gas forming reactions from gas all right so let's uh, look at uh, single displacement in greater detail and we want to be able to explain what the what is really happening and exclude things that don't change. So uh, in this case, uh, suppose we have uh, determined the products will be copper nitrate and uh, silver. So silver nitrate reacting with copper, giving copper nitrate aqueous and silver. That then would be our molecular. Yes, it doesn't involve molecules. We'll call it molecular. All right, that's, now let's write the overall ionic. What we do there is we look at the reagents and products and split them up whenever they are splittable. So let's think about that. Silver nitrate aqueous means we have silver ions on their own moving around and then nitrate ions on their own. That's what we mean by silver nitrate aqueous. They are independently mobile, so we can split them up. So silver nitrate splits up to Ag plus 
and the nitrate. Gotta know your polyatomic ions so you can infer what the charges are on these ions. You can look up the atomic ions back in the index uh, at the back of the book there listings of these polyatomic ions. Hopefully you've learned them already. All right, so why a two there? Because in the balancing we put a two there, so two AG plus, two NO3. The copper, we really can't split. It is just the copper metal solid, you can't split it. Then on the other side, uh, copper nitrate aqueous must mean with copper 2 plus aqueous, again, independent ions and two nitrate ions. And then the silver we can't split for the same reason we can't split the copper. Now we look at that equation and cancel everything that appears uh, the same on the left and right hand side to generate the net ionic equation. Only nitrate uh, appears on the um, on the left and right hand side without change. We cancel nitrate and we generate the net ionic equation. So what really happens in this reaction um, with the nitrate just spectating is that two silver ions gain two electrons from copper, generating a two AG solid and the copper two plus aqueous. All right. How about the double displacement? Well, if it's a double displacement, you must have a two sum here and a two sum here. And so in this case, it's quite easy because they're both ionic compounds. So the two sum here, two sum here is quite easy to identify. So if this reaction produces those products and we've verified those products, then the idea then is that uh, the silver again can be split into silver and nitrate, okay? Uh, sodium chloride, again, it's aqueous, so that splits up into its component ions. The AgCl is a solid. It's a solid. The ions are stuck. We're not going to split those. So we just write it as AgCl solid, and the sodium nitrate splits up. And then we cancel the ions that are the same, the spectator ions, the sodium and the nitrate ion, and we generate the net. So, if, uh, for example, in this reaction, we mix silver nitrate and sodium chloride, both of them start off as clear solutions. And then we observe some white, solid, precipitate kind of showing, right? And then we say, there is a solid. So what must have happened? Well, the only option here is to split partners, the silver hooking up with the chloride plus with the minus, plus with the minus, that generates the two on the right hand side. But which one came out as a solid? Well, we can look up the solubility rules. They are somewhere in lab number four. And with that, you'll find that sodium nitrate, any group one salts, any nitrate salts are soluble. So if you conceive sodium nitrate as one of the products, you then exclude it as being the possible solid, it must be aqueous, and then you must infer that AgCl is a solid, or you can infer directly from the solubility chart that AgCl is insoluble. So in lab, talk it out, figure it out, that's what it's all about, to be able to figure it out and reason things out. All right, uh, acid-base reaction, let me profile that reaction a little bit more. Uh, in this case, uh, let's consider strong acid, strong base. You know, you guys have discussed strong acids and strong base. So, you know, HCl is a strong acid. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. In this case, uh, if it's a strong acid, we split it completely into its ions. In this case, H plus or the hydronium ion and the chloride ion. Similarly, for the sodium hydroxide. Oxide split those two can split up the water that's molecular stays as mole molecule so we leave that as is and split up the sodium chloride its component uh, um, uh, ions that is a sodium ion and the chloride ion and then excluding the things that are the same on the right hand side and left hand side we end up with the classic definition of a strong acid strong base reaction H plus plus OH minus is equal to H2O. The situation is a little different if you have a weak acid. What happens in a weak acid? Well, it undergoes partial, partial, typically 
percent ionization it's because of that we're not going to split it so this is acetic acid got to know acetic acid the acetate ion acetic acid there it is right so we're not going to split that it's a weak acid don't split me right sodium hydroxide split split it's normal uh, h2o well keep it <laughs> sodium acetate that's a normal salt uh, split it remove things are the same in this case sodium we end up with a classic weak acid strong base reaction hmm. do this two or three times and you can do them all so if we produce a gas what are we going to do it's a gas we can see it bubbling or whatever so we're going to test to identify the gas if a glowing sp splint ignites and burns fervently we conclude the gas is oxygen if a burning splint causes an explosion, a pop, boom, pop, you'll actually hear the sound. Then the gas is hydrogen reacting in the, with oxygen in the air. And if the burning splint completely goes out, we will say the gas product is carbon dioxide. Mm. Um, we can test for whether the solution produced or consumed is acidic or basic using the phenolphthalein indicator. If you put a drop of phenolphthalein, if it's acidic or neutral, colorless. If he, the solution changes to a pink, it's a basic solution. What does that mean? It means you've produced the hydroxide ion, OH-. So whenever you see the pink color formation, in this case, you write on the right-hand side, OH- is a product. And then you try and figure out uh, the other products. And then we'll also be using litmus paper. Uh, if it's a basic solution, it 10 uh, red litmus paper blue. If it's an acidic solution, to 10 blue litmus paper red. And then if we're dealing with copper uh, and we do form a solution that tends blue, blue, what does that mean? It means we'll have formed copper 2 plus. So you write copper 2 plus is a product and you try and figure out the rest. Ah, here are the solubility rules, um, kind of, it's important to remember some of these, all nitrates, all group one salts, and all ammonium salts, NH4 plus are soluble, and then uh, the halide things, uh, group seven, they tend to be insoluble when hooked up with silver, lead, and mercury. And then, uh, we will say sulfates of barium, strontium, and lead and mercury are insoluble, and everything else we'll consider as soluble. Hmm. You're going to work with Benson Burner, so you're going to profile how it works, make sure the hose is nice and not broken, so we don't uh, cause a necessary fire. And uh, when you light it up, uh, there is the connection to the a main line that's the course control and then down here down up here there is the fine control uh, you can adjust the amount of gas coming in it's best to have this intake reduced air intake reduced at the beginning you'll get a yellow flame and then you'll open it up uh, to get the nice blue or colorless flame which is what we're looking for you're going to test uh, so uh, what uh, labs are we doing you're going to profile carbon dioxide solid uh, see what happens uh, dry ice is carbon dioxide. Be careful, it's at a very low temperature. Uh, you're going to test the dry ice uh, subliming, and then you're going to put it in water and uh, test it with uh, litmus paper. And from those observations, be able to write what is going on in terms of a chemical equation. Uh, so uh, Sodium carbonate and HCl, again, do the same things. The gas is produced here because you're going to test with a glowing splint, write that gas that you get, and then go back and figure out the rest of the products. Magnesium and HCl, mm, okay. Uh, again, the gas is produced or test a glowing splint, and then uh, write the reaction. And similarly, copper with uh, HCl. Sodium reacting with water, well, that's one of the fun ones, but it can also be dangerous, and so I'll have the TA demonstrate this. Um, observe what happens, 
and then be able to do the uh, chemical equation. Uh, copper reacting with uh, nitric acid that you guys will do but make sure it's performed in the hood uh, because in this case a gas a toxic gas is produced and so we want it sucked up the hood and nobody breathing it and so for each one of these experiments we tell you what to do with the wet waste products and so be sure sure to follow those Hydrogen peroxide using manganese. Well, I just described that already, but you guys can observe it for real. And then sodium oxide reacting with water. That's another fun one. And uh, again, uh, um, make the observation, write one of the products, figure out the rest of them. Ammonium chloride and sodium hydroxide. Hmm. Well, you'll see that that one is maybe one that doesn't actually produce some visible reaction, but some minor small temperature change that you might otherwise miss. Uh, and so for that, we have you putting in a temperature sensor so you can observe whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. And then uh, uh, sulfuric acid and barium hydroxide. Again, do the same, make the observations, and then be able to write the reactions. Um, redox reaction, I'll skip this one because I've already kind of described it. Uh, metals in a metallic solution, and we're looking for whether a redox reaction or not, since we're using an element. So, for example, if you have zinc and lead nitrate, does zinc go in solution and replace this lead so in in a way here we say the aqueous state is the preferred state so uh, things strive to get in the aqueous state if this reaction goes at all zinc would get in and then lead would come out as a solid and so with that you can write uh, the appropriate reactions i uh, want to remind you here that some of these might uh, uh, show no change at all if that is the case then you say um, no reaction all right, quite a few reactions, quite easy to do, a little thinking to talk it out with your partners and with your groups. Um, follow the rules, the sodium is to be done by the TA, um, and that's for safety reasons, okay? And uh, don't touch the dry ice, really cold at minus 78 degrees centigrade. And then uh, whenever you do these reactions, make sure that uh, you are not uh, putting your neighbor at risk. So have the test you pointing away from him in a body in case uh, we have some hoof thing. Um, shouldn't happen. We've kind of uh, uh, toned down the reagent, so that shouldn't happen. But uh, always uh, be careful about that. The lab report is the at the end of the lab, and so you'll have nothing to do uh, uh, when you leave the lab. That's always a good thing, I'm told. And so be careful with uh, uh, hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. Those are strong acids, so you want to make sure that they are not uh, getting any physical contact with them. As always, and very important in this case, keep your goggles on. Your eyes are very important. Well, you are very important, and especially your eyes. So keep your goggles on at all times. Interesting lamp. Uh, especially with uh, the need to write ionic uh, molecular ionic uh, molecular ionic and net figure those out work with each other it's somewhat of a challenging lab but clearly manageable and so let's enjoy our lab this week again this is uh, your one and only instructor Frazier Nyasolo see you in lab bye bye